Howdy, folks. I'm here in Oklahoma with my good friend Russell Cook here at Masterworks Dulcimers. Uh, Russell actually inspired me to play when uh, I was four years old. I heard a cassette tape of his, just gorgeous, and I said, Mom, I promise I want to learn to play that. So Russell and I have known each other Indeed. for years now. It's been exciting watching you grow as a person and as a dulcimer player, and now as a performer, entertainer, and uh, a uh, world traveler with the dulcimer, so it's exciting. I've been having a lot of fun with Joshua this last four years, three or four years now, developing something new. In fact, it's so exciting. Why don't we just go inside right now and go look at it? Right now, we're inside the Masterworks showroom, and this is what we're excited about. The Masterworks Dulciforte. This is a brand new hammered dulcimer that's now available for market. Now, some of you in some of my YouTube videos, you may have been seeing me play this. That's because Russell and I have been working on, uh, developing, on the, developing this instrument for a while, and there's been a lot of prototypes that I've been testing out. Russell, do you want to tell them a little bit about how we've been working on this? Certainly. We uh, started off talking about how to tune it, and what, what the tuning should be, what uh, the, the layout of the notes. Should the extended range bridge be on the right side? Should it be on the left side? And uh, even then was how many notes do we put over there? How many notes do we put on the upper left? Uh, we talked about the overall size, the overall range, which uh, in this case is a five octave going from A1 all the way up to A6. That's five octaves of range. And uh, from there, bridges, soundboard material, which has everything to do with the tone of the instrument. Um, the shape, this is the asymmetrical shape, which is so popular now. The spacing of the strings was big. That's a big deal. So That's there's just so deal. many different things that, that goes into designing an instrument. And I know what I like. I know what I wanted, or I thought I did, <laughs> until I started talking to Josh and some others about how they would like the instrument. But Josh and I have been working really closely together the last four years, and I'm real proud of it. It's, it's wonderful. Well, I'm just going to share with you a couple of the things that I really like about this instrument. Uh, the first things first is, is the balance. One thing that makes a good hammer dulcimer great, okay, is how well is the instrument balanced between the first octave, the second octave, the third octave, all the way up to that fifth octave range. Does it sound like the same instrument? And one thing that just bothers me for a while is a lot of instruments that I've played, it's like I'm playing two dulcimers. Sometimes it feels like it's even three dulcimers. This instrument, it's the same instrument from the top to the bottom. It has a consistency to it. And that's not one thing we worked really hard on. It's tough. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's just not natural to have the same tone, same attack on the bottom end of such a wide instrument and then still be similar in tone and personality on the upper end of the, the instrument. Keep in mind, this is a third of the distance of the long end rail. That's a completely different instrument up there physically. To get it to sound right or even in volume and tone and attitude is, is tough and I think we've done a pretty good job of it. I think we've done it. The other thing that I love is, is the clarity. So many times we get, we frame things as, okay, how much sustain does the hammer dulcimer have? And there's val there's validity to that, but I think there's a better way to think about that. And that is the clarity of the instrument. Because all hammer dulcimers have sustain. When I play a note, how clear is it? And when I play a note, after I've played a note right before it, so when I go like, you know, to the next one, does the next note have a presence and do the harmonics cover up the, uh, the, the one that came right before it? So in other words, when I play a note, there's not mud. There's a clarity throughout the instrument. That's so wonderful for me because I can still have a beautiful controlled sustain, clarity, great tone, balance throughout the instrument. And then the, the last thing is... Oh, well, there's a lot of things, but the last thing for now <laughs> is these dampers. Um, I absolutely love this damper technology. It has real easily right here, you can remove the little uh, holder that keeps them in place when you're traveling, and then you can just take a cable and connect the dampers, 
and uh, play it with a, uh, literally it's a bicycle cable, play it with your foot. So the responsiveness of these dampers is unbelievable. And I think the best that I've ever used. And it allows me to have control, not, over, not only of just are the dampers muting the strings or is it open, but in between stages, a little bit of a mute uh, or a lot of a mute, whatever I want. And then when I do engage the dampers, the sustain stops, okay? It's not immediate, but it's close to immediate. In other words, it allows me to not just use the dampers as a sound or a different timbre, but if I'm doing a chord change, uh, that is dissonant. Uh, it allows me to control the instrument in a way that's um, I have to say I've been really impressed with Joshua and others, but especially Joshua. Um, I, I was noticing at Winfield uh, just a couple of weeks ago how often he was using the dampers, but at times I didn't even really recognize that the damper was in, in the process at all but he was just touching it here and there to eliminate the previous chord before going to the next chord without just deadening it. And I couldn't do that without this damper technology that you created. That, that has enabled me to have a more musical performance. What we're gonna be working on uh, on this visit here uh, to Oklahoma is we're gonna be coming out with a special design. We're working on it right now, but it's gonna be the Joshua Messick Artist Series uh, design that has uh, the wood choices, uh, the setup, all the things that I want in my hammer dulcimer. And that's what I'm going to be playing here real soon. I'm going to be getting that instrument. I can't wait. But you can play what I play. And uh, I'm excited to, to work on that uh, design with Katie Moritz. Uh, she's going to be helping design that with me and come up with something that meets my personality has all the things that I want in a hammer dulcimer, and you could have that as well. So be on the lookout for that. Hey, we've talked a lot about this dulcimer. How about we go listen to it? Well, I'm gonna show you some of the things that excite me about this hammer dulcimer. The first thing is, is the bottom end. It has this power to it. It's big, but just not too big. It's not trying to be a bass. It's still a hammer dulcimer. I love that, and it allows me to, to play things that I could never do before. Like, this is the intro uh, to God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen on my new Christmas album. The next thing is we talked about extensively already are the dampers, which you just saw me using. Um, the control, they're quiet. Listen to that, they're quiet. So when I engage them, it has a nice sound. Okay. But also whenever I'm, what I do called pumping them in rhythm, which you saw me doing a little. If I'm changing a chord, going from say a G to a C to an F, you hear that? How it's just nice and smooth back to the A, nice and smooth, and you hear how the the sustain's gone. It's gone now. I love that it's able to stop the sustain entirely, but gracefully, not like it's slamming on the brakes. It has a nice smooth fade to it. I love having the extended range on the right, on the right side of the instrument. Because let's say I'm playing a G chord. So G, D, G, okay? I can do that with one hand. That allows for Now shift to the C. Back to the G, to the D, to the G. Hmm. So those are things that I can't play with the bass on the left. And it allows for, I would say, smoother 
and more symmetrical chording, okay, with the voicing of my chords, there can be a lot of symmetry in the voicing going from the G to the C to the D, there's consistency there. The upper range of the instrument has this, that signature masterwork sound to it. That sparkle, that music box-like, and it sounds gorgeous when plucked. Just love that. This string spacing has been increased from uh, previous Masterworks models. It's a little bit more, not a lot, just a little bit. But that little bit makes a lot of difference in the performance. And when I started playing the dulcaforte, my wife Stephanie noticed that I was making fewer mistakes. Well, that's because there's more space between the strings and what used to be a mistake is now a right note. Um, and whenever I'm not scared of making mistakes, uh, it allows for more musical phrasing. You know, when I'm playing really detailed, you know, passages, and I'm really involved in the emotion, and I'm not trying to think about, oh my goodness, am I hitting a right note? That allows me to express myself. If you're interested in this hammer dulcimer, uh, I am a Masterworks sales representative, and I'd love to hear from you and help you uh, buy one of these. So go to my website, joshuamessick.com, and uh, get in touch with me. I'll have some information on there uh, about this instrument, also how to get, in hold, get a hold of me, and, and I can help guide you uh, to find the instrument that you love. Uh, give me a call. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.